boy, it was a pretty big night in terms of passing that $2 trillion package in the Senate. I, I thought that was very impressive. It was. What? How do you feel about some of the things that got in there, though, like people being able to make more money on unemployment if they stay on unemployment than if they go back to their jobs or uh, twenty five million dollars for the Kennedy Center or things like that? Is that just how Washington operates and we should expect it? Yeah, somebody once said you should never watch either sausage or laws being made. And this was a good example. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think for a two trillion dollar emergency package. Uh, that uh, Senator McConnell did an amazing job of orchestrating it and ultimately setting it up so that the Democrats had to agree to it. I think it tells you a lot that uh, Speaker Pelosi's indicated they may try to pass it Friday morning on a voice vote. Uh, so, you know, in terms of what the country needs, probably 90 or 95 percent of that bill is useful, and 5 percent think of it as the carrying charge for letting politicians do it. Yeah, uh, but that's the way it's been for all of all of American history has been like that. So, uh, but I think overall, given the size of the challenge we're facing, we really needed that bill. And had it stayed hung up, I think it would have been uh, a really uh, depressing for the economy and for the American people. Well, yeah. you're you're one of the people who's been taking this all very seriously. But your successor here, Nancy Pelosi, current Speaker of the House evidently was not taking it seriously because earlier this week she attempted to assemble this woke package of laws that had nothing to do with actually giving people aid during this crisis, uh, but it caused a big delay in getting this current package passed. What did you think of that? Well, I I thought it was one of those places where she just was tone deaf, and and, uh, I think ultimately uh, probably Schumer convinced her that it was just not possible. Uh, you know, you, you can't come in when you have a nationwide and, frankly, worldwide crisis. Uh, you can't come in and try to blackmail the American people to get some kind of laundry list that uh, left-wingers in your caucus want. And she, when she produced that 1,400-page bill, uh, she just set herself up for ridicule because there was so much in that bill that made no sense. I think in the legislative process, look, everybody gets to compete. I, I thought it was perfectly legitimate for Senator Schumer to say, here are the three or four things I need. A couple of them, as you pointed out, are, are frankly a little bit dumb. Why, why would you have unemployment compensation that pays more than your actual salary? Uh, however, a lot of that stuff is temporary. It's going to get us through the next three months. Uh, and this is really, I think, a crisis of American civilization. You, you are dealing with such a large change. You look at New York, uh, and I'm, I'm talking to you from Rome, where everybody is locked down. Uh, I mean, in Rome, the only things that are open are grocery stores, pharmacies, and gas stations. And the police can give you a fine that is very expensive if you're if you're found in the street. So um, I think we, we're really dealing with a crisis of, uh, involving thousands of potential dead. And I think in that sense that uh, Speaker Pelosi just got way off center. And uh, luckily for the country, uh, somebody talked her out of it, and they're now back to being semi-rational. You you talk about Italy, and it's a nice pivot to talk about that because Italy's being held up as, you know, just just what not to do. I mean, they have such a high death rate there, death toll. And I think there's a couple of things that were beyond their control. They had a lot of tourists from China who brought the virus in and spread it before anybody really knew uh, what was going on there. Has Italy finally turned the corner, though? Are you seeing some kind of relief now? Well, we, we think it's a beginning to come towards the, the, the peak. Uh, there's been a gradual, slight slowing in the number of new cases. And the number of people who die is actually a lagging indicator from two weeks ago, the number of people who began to be new cases. So uh, to focus on the future, you're looking for how many new cases are they adding. That seems to be slowing down a little bit. Uh, there's some hope. Uh, but they did get behind the curve, and I think it's a big distinction between what President Trump did, for which he was initially deeply criticized. You know, he cut off the flights from China immediately. Uh, the Italians could not bring themselves to do that. There are 100,000 Chinese in uh, northern Italy. Uh, many of them come directly from Wuhan. There were flights coming in from Wuhan far too long, and the, the government wasn't tracking carefully what was happening. So they got several weeks behind the curve. Then they began to realize how big a crisis this was, and they have really responded very well. And the Italian people have responded very well. People stay at home. They're working from home. 
uh, they basically imagine an entire country uh, which is uh, self-quarantining, and you have some idea what it's like. And, and this is very expensive for Italy. Uh, they get 14% of their economy from tourism. Last year, there were 23,000 people a day visiting the Colosseum. Today, there are zero. Now, think about the impact of that over the course of the next few months. Yeah, it's amazing. It's just amazing to watch. Um, when we deal with it here in the United States, the way we're dealing with it, you have the president obviously voicing uh, something that a lot of people want to see, which is to eventually get us back to work. He indicated this week uh, that he would love to have the country reopened by Easter. Of course, there's a patchwork of, of policies around the country. Governors are very much in charge of a lot of what's going on in each of the individual states. But, you know, we have a very different country, uh, uh, Mr. Speaker, than a lot of the Asian countries that have used authoritarian policies to lock down their citizens. What do you think is the appropriate way that we can begin inching back into the real world? Well, let me say we did a podcast Sunday on Newt's World uh, on this very topic. Steve Moore joined me from the Heritage Foundation and talked about how to reopen the economy. Um, I think that we have to recognize that there are huge differences. Uh, New York City in some ways resembles northern Italy. Uh, I think that, that New York City and, and Westchester, that immediate air metro area, has to have very severe lockdown. May, maybe a lockdown that's almost impossible in a city the size of uh, New York, but they've got to do everything they can to minimize interaction and to try to isolate people. On the other hand, there's some counties in upstate New York that have no virus. Uh, I think um, South Dakota, as of uh, yesterday, has 41 people who, who are sick. So you, you don't want to apply across the whole country the same ground rules. And I think that part of what the president is wrestling with uh, is can we find a way, and I have a, my, my newsletter, which will come out tomorrow, to, so makes the argument that, that we don't have a contradiction here. We want public health and we want a healthy economy. And that, that's going to require leadership. It's going to require people like Dr. Fauci. To, to, to reverse the question that they normally ask. Normally, public health people say, this is what you can't do. But what I want to know is, what can we do? And can a state or a county that has no disease, is there a strategy where they can monitor it, go about their lives, isolate the handful of people that have a problem? Right. And we have one village in northern Italy that did that, and they have done an amazing job of, of reducing uh, the virus in their village. But it requires more equipment and a different focus than we've been having. That's right. A dynamic problem requires dynamic solutions. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Good to have you with exactly. us. Great to be with you. All right.